Finish that. Enter the gates of heaven. So you've got some biblical knowledge? Yeah, ten years of Catholic school. Ten years in Catholic school. You'll beat me Let's see how good you are. What's your name? My name's Jack. Okay, Jack. Are you familiar with the sinful woman that washed Jesus' hair with her feet? Yes. She was a prostitute? Yep. Okay, what happened after that? Do you know? Jesus told her to stand up. Actually, Jonah didn't swallow the whale. That'd be a pretty big meal. Okay, do you know the story of Jonah swallowing the whale? Yes. And it's not easy for a needle to go through the eye of a camel. I think the camel will get a little upset. It's easier for a needle to go through the eye of a camel than for a rich man to... Can anyone finish that? Enter the gates of heaven. And the sinful woman didn't wash Jesus' hair with her feet. She washed his feet with her hair. Are you familiar with the sinful woman that washed Jesus' hair with her feet? Yes. The point is, we can hear something and yet not listen to what's actually being said. Take, for example, the average pharmaceutical television advertisement. These run at about 80 per hour in the US. The Supreme Court, that is the Roe vs. Wade folks, said that these advertisements are all part of free speech. If you watch closely, you'll notice the advertisers distract from what's actually being said with loud or cool music and by using heartwarming images. Let's look at two typical advertisements. This drug is supposed to stop us thinking about ice cream and french fries. I'm so hungry. And your reward system. Ice cream. French fries. Listen for the pleasant music with this one and watch for the heartwarming images as they tell you about the side effects of this drug. It may increase suicidal thoughts or actions in some children, teens, and young adults in the first few months. Serious side effects are mood changes like depression and mania, seizures, increased blood pressure or heart rate, liver damage, glaucoma, allergic reactions, and hypoglycemia. Let me put in some more appropriate music to help you hear what's actually being said. The side effects are suicidal thoughts. That is, for months there's a possibility that this drug will make you want to kill yourself. Depression? and something called mania. Another word for mania is insanity. You can also start having seizures. You could have an increased blood pressure or heart rate, liver damage, and by the way, the liver filters poison from your body. Damage your liver, and the poisons will enter your body. You can also develop glycoma, that is blindness, allergic reactions, hypoglycemia, constipation, nausea, and vomiting. An alternative to taking this drug would be to exercise self-control and say no to cravings like the rest of us have to do. Here's another drug that's supposed to improve your health. Listen for the loud music with this one and watch for the heartwarming images. Lower your ability to fight infections, including tuberculosis. Serious, sometimes fatal infections and cancers, including lymphoma, have happened, as have blood, liver, and nervous system problems, serious allergic reactions, and new or worsening heart failure. Here are the side effects. It can lower your ability to fight horrific diseases such as tuberculosis and cancer. Serious, sometimes fatal infections, that is infections that will kill you, blood, liver and nervous system problems, serious allergic reactions, whatever that means, plus new or worsening heart failure. This drug could cause your heart to stop. Abnormal behaviors may include aggressiveness, agitation, hallucinations, or confusion. Worsening of depression, including risk of suicide, may occur. Allergic reactions such as tongue or throat swelling and may be fatal. What kind of evil society allows this sort of insanity to brainwash its people? And what sort of sick television network cares more about money from advertising than it does about the well-being of their viewers? The answer is obvious. They don't care in the slightest. Okay, have you ever stolen something, even if it's small? In your whole life? Yes. You ever call someone who steals things? A stealer. No, they're from Pittsburgh. <laughs> A thief. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Yes. OMG, anything like that? Yes. Okay, that's very serious. It's using God's name as a cuss word. Call blasphemy in the Bible. 
One to go and appreciate your honesty. Jesus said, if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Yes. Now, do you still think you're a good person? Yes. Are you going to hold on to that? I'm going to hold on to it. Even Barely. though you're a self-admitted lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterate heart, you think <laughs> a lying thief is a good person? I'm above average, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got a very low view of humanity. You yes, know, The dictionary has over 40 different definitions of the word good. Did you know that? Number one is moral excellence. In God's book, good is morally excellent. And you and I fall short of that standard. So here's the big rub. If God judges you by the Ten Commandments on Judgment Day, we've looked at four of them, will you be innocent or guilty? Mm, if I have to pass all ten, I would say probably guilty. You haven't even passed one! <laughs> I mean, seriously, what do you think God requires of you? If you're a human being, what is God's requirement of you? Do you know? Ten Commandments? Oh, yeah, even more than that. Ten Commandments are summed up according to Jesus and this statement. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's what God requires of you, to love Him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. In fact, it gets even worse for us. Jesus said this. He said, your love for God should be so great that your love for your mother, your brother, your father, your sister, and your own life should seem like hatred compared to the love you have for the God that gave those loved ones and that life to you. Now, if you love God like that, yeah. <laughs> what do you think you love God when you use his name as a cuss word? And there's no greater insult you can pay to someone than to use their name as a substitute for a filth word. The Bible says God is rich in mercy. He doesn't want you to go to hell. He provided a savior. Jesus took the punishment for the sin of the world. You and I violated God's law, the Ten Commandments. Jesus paid the fine. If you're in court, someone pays the fine. Even though you're guilty, the judge can let you go. Did you know that? You can say this person's guilty, but someone's paid the fine. They're out of here. Well, God can forgive your sins in an instant because of what Jesus did on the cross. He can commute your death sentence, let you live forever because he's rich in mercy and provided the Savior who suffered for the sin of the world and rose from the dead. What you have to do is repent and trust alone in him. Don't trust your own goodness because you don't have any. You're like me. Trust in the Savior. Does it make sense what I'm saying? Yep, 100%. Now, I don't know if you can detect an earnestness on my heart, but there's a tremendous earnestness. I am so concerned for you. If you die in your sins, there's no recourse. Damnation means damnation. There's no doorway out of hell. And I so want you to get right with God. So there are two things you have to do to be saved. You must repent and trust alone in Jesus. When are you going to do that? Currently. Right now? Yeah. I trust you've seen your sin in its true light. You found a place of true sorrow for your sin and repentance and true faith in Christ. Okay, when did you last read your Bible? A year and a half ago. Pick up God's Word and read it daily. Prayer is you talking to God. The Bible is God talking to you. And the Bible says, be swift to hear. And I want to give you a book that I wrote, okay? Is right. that okay?